Uh, so, we have come to the second lecture of module 5. In the first lecture, I discuss with you along the same lines of uh, how a material can drop in resistance, especially in a rare earth uh, oxide such as lanthanum manganate, how this particular unit cell displays a unique property of both becoming ferromagnetic as well as becoming metallic from a non-magnetic and a insulating state. <clears throat> I call this as a genie inside the lattice because two things are operative in a same single lattice. Now, today I want to talk along the same lines of uh, losing resistance in a different class of compounds called metallic multilayers. Metallic multilayers and uh, the way the material loses ma the electrical resistivity brings a unique um, nature uh, of giant magneto resistance which can be used for a variety of applications. Uh, to draw your attention more, uh, this ma metallic multilayers are presently used in our computer read heads and it has brought about a tremendous revolution in the magnetic storage system. So, quickly let me go through <coughs> and tell you uh, about the last uh, lectures um, brief. Here we told that uh, the CMR oxide or colossal magneto resistive manganese shows loss in resistance at the Curie temperature if you apply a very high field and this can be used for magneto resistivity or giant magneto resistivity or colossal magneto resistivity. It is mentioned in different ways and by and large colossal MR is referred to manganites whereas giant magneto resistivity is actually referred to multilayers. Now, this is the application that I draw drew your attention to that it can be used as a read head and uh, you can also write information using this set of devices. <coughs> so, uh, the compounds which show similar property colossal MR property is compounds based on LAMNO3 when substituted with the strontium, barium or copper. Now, what is uh, important as far as the metallic multilayers are concerned? This is a typical multilayer that is made and it is presently used in our computer uh, hard disk. And if you want to see the uh, animation of this, you should visit this website. This is displayed in IBM.com website where you, they will show you how the resistance varies if uh, varies with information and how that can be used for reading magnetic information. In this device you would see there is this is a bit that has to be read. We have a free layer which is this one this is a free magnetic layer and then you have a spacer layer in between and you have a pinned layer this is also a ferromagnetic layer, but this is actually pinned to the exchange layer or anti ferromagnetic layer. Uh, this is also shown in this view graph where you have the copper spacer and you have the GMR free film yeah, nickel iron which is called permalloy um, and this is there on the top and you also have cobalt which is actually pinned to a anti ferromagnetic exchange film. So, when you have a ferromagnet and a ferromagnet divided by a spacer and this ferromagnetic layer is actually pinned by a anti ferromagnet then this top layer alone is free to rotate. I will come to the uh, physics of it later, but what happens is in such a device system the uh, reading capacity of this head becomes much much faster than the magneto resistive head that is used now. So, the implications are phenomenal same thing you can do you can pin uh, with an anti ferromagnetic layer a magnetic layer therefore, this moment will be fixed 
this magnetic moment is fixed and then you have a instead of copper in the previous case you can put a insulating layer if you can pin this magnetization in this direction then when you apply magnetic field actually the magnetic field can either rotate this in this direction or it can rotate in this direction. So, this is free to rotate depending on the um, <coughs> field of magnetization and in such case when the moments of this ferromagnetic layer and this is aligned then the electron that is flowing across this layer will easily tunnel whereas in this case be because these two ferromagnetic layers are in opposite direction then the tunneling of this electron becomes difficult as a result you have a high resistance case and a low resistance case we will come to this later this is called TMR devices tunneling magneto resistance in the previous case we talked about giant magneto resistance both have tremendous application and this is uh, this TMR device is actually used for magnetic random access memory devices which is a, a major breakthrough in today's technology because an enlargement of the active layers in MRAM device is actually shown here and this is exactly the way a MRAM device will look like <coughs> where you have a antiferromagnet and this is actually pinning this is pinning a ferromagnetic layer whose electrons have a spin in this direction and then you have a um, coupling layer like this um, and then you have uh, the other ferromagnetic layer here. Uh, so, you have the ferromagnetic layer and the uh, <coughs> antiferromagnetic layer which is actually pinning then you have a tunneling insulator and then another ferromagnetic layer on the top. So, this is the way a MRAM device is actually used in uh, <coughs> IBM. The red and the green spheres represents electrons spinning in opposite directions in the magnetic uh, layers. The very thin insulator allows electrons to quantum mechanically tunnel across this interface and uh, <coughs> uh, information is actually stored in the top layer by forcing its electron to spin in one direction or other. So, this is the uh, free layer where the flip can either be clockwise or anti clockwise depending upon the configuration and depending upon the magnetic field direction. So, this is one of the major uh, <coughs> development in the magnetic storage where thin layers of ferromagnetic um, metals are actually stacked across a non magnetic layer or a insulating layer. I will come to the details of it later. Now, according to Moore's law number of transistors uh, increases per integrated circuit as a function of the number of years. So, if you if you see the transistors that can be accommodated in the integrated circuit has almost linearly increased and this is called Moore's law. So, you can actually have hundreds and thousands of uh, transistors stacked in a s integrated circuit now and uh, um, <coughs> this is bound to keep going in the future years. The same analogy can be extrapolated for magnetic recording which is also equivalent to Moore's law. The aerial density actually is keep increasing with the years it is almost you see a linear dependency therefore, magnetic recording more and more information can be stored in the hard disk because you have a powerful read head memory device now and the current memory device that is used in I, uh, used by IBM is called spin valve MR head. If you have opportunity you can visit the IBM website to understand how this multi layers are used to improve the aerial density. So, this is bound to bring lot of revolution into the magnetic uh, uh, recording uh, <coughs> market. Now, what is fundamental to this uh, application is in the in the case of electronics so far people have worried more about the charge charge 
and number of charge are very important for a semiconducting industry. Whereas, if you look at another missing link in this whole application is the spin part of the electron. Electron has spin either plus half or minus half and this spin actually can control the charge of the electron. So far the spin part is actually forgotten. Electronic industry has extra, uh, exploited the issue of charge, number of charge carriers, but never it has bothered about controlling the charges or the mobility of electrons with respect to spin part. Therefore, if you apply a magnetic field then either it will be up spin or down spin and depending upon the population of electrons that you are going to force then you can modify the electronic part. So, that is what is called as spin electronics or spintronics it is also called as magneto electronics because you are trying to control the electronic property using magnetic field and uh, this was actually proposed the uh, issue of uh, spin part was proposed as early as 1926. Now, if you take any met metal in the periodic table you can easily classify whether it is a non magnetic metal or whether it is a magnetic metal or it is a uh, ferromagnetic metal. Okay. Now, in the case of copper, chromium, ruthenium we know that it is a metal, but not a ferromagnetic metal. Why? Because you have the number of up spin electrons and the down spin electrons they are exactly having the same sub bands spin bands across the Fermi level. So, because they are equal then this can be actually called a non magnetic metal because the number of up spin electron cancels the number of down spin electrons therefore, there is no net ferromagnetic moment there is no net magnetic moment. Whereas, in the case of iron cobalt and nickel as we saw in the first module the whole thing can be explained based on molecular orbital theory where you can see the spin up band has the spin band like this across the Fermi level and the spin down band has across uh, the Fermi level a band which is lower than the spin up band. As a result there is a net moment okay, which makes this material ferromagnetic. Now, if you look at these compounds chromium dioxide which is actually used in videotape and this is the colossal magneto resistive CMR oxides. One of the interesting uh, feature is one of the spin, band, spin up band here is actually well above the Fermi level and what matters finally, is the spin down band which is cutting across the Fermi level. Therefore, the conduction can actually come from one of the spin bands which is completely devoid of the Fermi level. Okay. In such case this is called as half metallic ferromagnets this is called as half metallic ferromagnets. This sort of magnets have 100 percent polarization compared to the traditional ferromagnets these ferromagnets have 100 percent polarization because in one of the configuration the spin up band is actually 100 percent spin polarized. So, this can be used for the GMR or uh, CMR applications. So, this is very important as we think about what set of material you want to use for tunneling magneto resistance because if you want to tunnel um, the, uh, the electron then if it is actually 100 percent spin polarized then it can easily tunnel because there would not be any scattering proc process across the interface. Um, now, I will have to register uh, uh, this issue that the whole idea of uh, CMR or GMR or TMR all this came to prominence because of the discovery of uh, magneto resistance 
by these two gentlemen this is uh, Albert Furt from France and this is Peter Groenberg from Forschung Centrum Eulisch both of them found out that there is a strange coupling mechanism happening if you can maintain this metallic multi layers in a very very thin dimension and they found there is a huge response when you measure such uh, device, uh, uh, such stackings um, when you measure the electrical conductivity and they found there is a huge loss in resistance in the presence and absence of field and that is what brings to um, <coughs> effect the uh, GMR spin valves. Now, what really they did this is Peter Grunberg who is uh, receiving his Nobel Prize in 2007 which marks the birth of spintronics. Also I should say because they emphasized on thin magnetic or non magnetic layers as small as 1 nanometer the issue of nanotechnology became more prominent after the discovery. Now, what did uh, Peter Grunberg uh, report? Uh, in his report he said if you take only iron of this dimension say 250 nanometer and if you measure the resistance as a function of magnetic field in both directions you see a very small change in the resistance which is called anisotropic magneto resistance um, which is of a very low order. Whereas, if you now separate the same amount thickness of iron, but you divide it as 120 nanometer 120 nanometer of iron and you put one single small layer of uh, chromium which is only 1 nanometer in this form then you can clearly see this same feature which is supposed to be there is now a more pronounced feature like this. So, what happens when there is 0 field here when there is 0 field these two ferromagnets are actually anti parallelly they are coupled ok. They are anti ferromagnetically coupled, but they are not actually anti ferromagnets the way they are coupled is of the opposite form therefore, we can call this as anti ferromagnetic coupling. Now, as you sweep the magnetic field in both directions you see that these two moments get ferromagnetically ordered in this fashion and at that point the resistance is really low and the same way it happens if you flip it to the other direction therefore, there is a tremendous fall in resistance as you sweep the magnetic field. Suppose you can keep reverting this at a very low field then it becomes a real magnetic switch. So, Albert Furt actually brought out this notion he said um, I can try to make several of these bilayers several of these bilayers instead of just a tri layer and everywhere I will try to change the spacer layer thickness. So, that is what he did if you have chromium as 1.8 nanometer or 1.2 nanometer or 0 0.9 nanometer as you bring down the spacer layer smaller and smaller you can see there is a tremendous fall in resistance and also the field sensitivity is quite bright compared to even this example. So, if you make such re bilayer repeats of 30 angstrom uh, iron and chrome 9 angstrom um, chromium and if you make repeats like 60 times or 30 times or 30 times like this then you see a tremendous fall in resistance and that makes the application much more prospective where you can now look for um, a 0 1 switch. So, that you can write and read the magnetic information as a 0 1 bit. So, this is the birth for spin electronic applications. Now, what really happens is this cartoon tells you that if you have this ferromagnetic layer aligned in this direction and this ferromagnetic layer aligned in uh, opposite direction they are anti ferromagnetically coupled whereas, in this case they are ferromagnetically coupled. Now, in both case you will see when they are anti ferromagnetically coupled then they have a different uh, <coughs> resistance that is what we show here, but once you force with the uh, magnetic field in this direction all these anti ferromagnetically coupled layers they also go ferromagnetic. So, as a result you have 
a low resistance state and a high resistance state at h is equal to 0 which which is important for magneto resistive property. But what is uh, needed is this saturation cannot take so much time it has to saturate very sharply for applications then only you can use such materials for 0 1 bit reading or writing ok. Otherwise, if it takes too much of a field saturation then that cannot really act as a very good device. So, to transform this people have made several structures and they have made something called spin valve where the top ferromagnetic layer is more like a valve and the bottom ferromagnetic layer is actually pinned to a anti ferromagnet. So, even with small magnetic field like a valve you can rotate the moment of the top magnetic layer. So, that is the uh, technological uh, challenge. Now, let me run through some of the uh, issues just to register that in your memory. This new field of electronics which is not based on conduction of electrons or holes but relies on the different transport properties of majority and minority spin uh, um, electrons actually forms the basis for spin electronics. Add to electronics an additional degree of freedom that is the spin character. So, you are actually using the spin of the electron for governing the electronic properties. So, magnet in magneto electronics you actually have passive elements which are resistors change in resistance uh, happens upon ma application of magnetic field whereas, in spect uh, spintronics you actually have active elements which are spin transistors amp this amplify a current rather than merely switching it on or off ok. So, what are such characters you have a metal ferromagnet semiconductor uh, non ferromagnet and then you also have a ferromagnet. So, this sort of structures can actually um, bring about the spintronic applications. Another uh, key factors that I want to emphasize is spin electronics in semiconductors are also possible. An obstacle for spintronics is that electronic companies are geared up for semiconductors. They are traditionally they know how to handle a semiconductor and to run the industry without any interruption. An important goal is to make devices using semiconductors that are compatible with existing spin technology, chip technology. The problem is that conventional semiconductors used in integrated circuits are not magnetic. This is why several research groups are exploring ways to tune the semiconductors into ferromagnetic metals which we call it as dilute magnetic semiconductors. So, another field apart from tunneling magneto resistance comes into picture which is called DMS field where they want to retain the semiconductor technology, but just do a careful manipulation. So, that you can make the semiconductor magnetic, so that you can tune the electronic properties now controlling the spin part of the um, <coughs> semiconductor. The big problem here is spin polarized transport across the interfaces uh, between different materials, because interfaces are very sensitive between semiconductors and ferromagnetic metals presently they they induce a Scott key barrier that is leading to loss of spin polarization. So, one has to overcome this Scott key barrier which is the challenge if you want to realize a DNS situ, uh, situation here. Ferromagnetic semiconductors injecting spin across the interface between two semiconductors one of them ferromagnetic should be easier because there is no Scott key barrier. ZNSE doped with beryllium manganese or cobalt doped with TaO2 manganese doped with SNO they are all candidates for ferromagnetic semiconductors. What is the aim? If fully switchable all semiconductor spin walls are possible, semiconductor spin transistors are possible. So, there are tremendous scope that is lying if we can generate newer materials. A bit of history in a the anisotropic magneto resistance was reported as early as 1857 and in 1947 there was a discovery of uh, transit action in germanium. 1952 germanium transistors were discovered then 1950 and 60s this random access memories in computers were brought in in USA 
then 1975 first time a tunneling magneto resistance uh, response was reported by Julieri and uh, 1979 IBM introduced thin film heads which is called MR read heads um, which uh, started coming and affecting the memory storage and that is where we saw the computers coming into uh, every home. And a bit of very recent history 1988-1990 GMR was uh, reported by uh, both this Nobel laureates and 1991 IBM introduced the, the AMR effect to uh, for readout in hard disk drive 1991 the spin valve effect was also um, uh, recognized 1994 first commercial product using GMR a magnetic field sensor was brought in and uh, a bit of history till our days 1995 tunnel magneto resistance was rediscovered and in 1997 this is the most important stuff GMR using GMR property IBM brought its first hard disk drive and in 2004 we have free scale semiconductor they currently sampling a 4 megabit MRAM chip for backup memory in industrial and military uh, environments. In near future you have MRAM production expected in 2005 which is already set into action now by 2010 we have a generation of MRAM devices which are coming into market. This was actually a forecast um, uh, several years back but this is actually turning out to be a reality in 2010. Now GMR in spin valves is typically of this uh, nature I have already shown you a cartoon impressing upon the uh, importance of it. So you actually have an antiferromagnetic uh, pinning layer which is spinning a ferromagnetic layer therefore that moment is fixed and then you have a spacer layer and a free layer this free layer can rotate either this way or it can rotate this way freely changing the resist overall resistance of the device. So typically if you want to look at the device the device will have a hysteresis M versus H hysteresis M versus H hysteresis like this where in one direction you see the loop and the other direction is actually pinned. If you measure the resistance as a function of field you can see when this is this ma ferromagnet is actually pinned it is like this sorry it is coming this way and then this free layer it can rotate very sharply. In other words you can achieve saturation in even with the 10 or 20 Orsted because this is a free layer and this can easily rotate to align in the direction in which it wants. So you can get this field sensitivity in spin valve device which is of fundamental importance for technological applications and in this cartoon what we see here is GMR up to 5 percent at just 10 Orsted which is uh, less than the, the field that is generated by the magnets which we try to put on the refrigerator. So, even with such a low magnetic field you can actually make this switch operate therefore it can be used for a magnetic uh, sensor application. GMR can also be uh, found in granular uh, alloys, uh, granular alloys means those which are like cobalt copper if you co sputter or co deposit cobalt and copper you would see that cobalt and copper are not miscible. So, in a copper matrix cobalt will actually form a cluster like st stuff instead of forming a continuous layer cobalt will form clusters and depending on the cluster size of this cobalt in copper matrix you can see resistance varying and that is what you see here this is cobalt in copper and you can see as a function of temperature the magneto resistance changes and also one can change the um, GMR property based on the uh, cluster size cluster size of cobalt metal. So, uh, this is another way uh, GMR property can be exemplified. Now, let me tell you briefly what really makes this useful for magnetic readed applications this is the origin of GMR and the principle that acts in this GMR is called spin dependent scattering spin is getting scattered 
at the interface between a ferromagnet and a metal and a metal and a ferromagnet. So, uh, we can look at this situation in the following way there are two models given in these two models you see in this model this is a ferromagnet and this is a ferromagnet where the moments are aligned in same direction and in this it is a ferromagnet this is a ferromagnet and it is aligned in opposite fashion and this is the non magnetic layer which is a metal. Now, you have both the situations of a spin up electron spin down electron spin up electron when it is going from this layer to this layer as you are measuring the current you see because these two are up spin in this direction then there is no scattering it will just go across this interface whereas the spin down will get scattered little bit here and then it will go through again it will get scattered here. So, if you try to translate this to a resistivity model for the spin up there is low resistance pathway which is like this, but for a spin down the resistance pathway actually comes out like this which is bigger because in both cases it is getting scattered therefore, resistance in this form is a high resistivity uh, issue. So, in one case you have a low resistance in other case it is a higher resistance whereas, when you come here for spin up it gets easily uh, to this stage and then it gets scattered here therefore, you have a low resistance and a high resistance same thing happens for the spin down also here it gets more uh, scattered and then it gets easily transmitted therefore, in if you draw this resistivity model then you see in both cases there is higher resistance in either way. Therefore, in overall if you see this resistance is going to be very high compared to this this is uh, this resistance when the ferromagnets are aligned anti parallel in this case ferromagnets are aligned parallel. So, in what happens is a short circuit therefore, resistance is lower when these two are ferromagnetically aligned and when they are ferromagnetically non aligned they are anti ferromagnetically aligned then you have a higher resistance and that is what is called GMR or giant magneto resistance in in the presence of field and in the absence of field you see difference. So, when magnetic informations are actually to be read you have a low resistance case or a high resistance case which can actually flip as a 0 1 0 1 bit and this property is what is important for re reading magnetic storage. One thing that we need to understand if you want such GMR property to be there and if this is purely a spin dependent scattering then I uh, will come to the previous one once more. So, if this has to go through without scattering this interface has to be very very sharp there should be no roughness if there are physical defects also scattering will occur therefore, you need to know how to make thin layers like this. So, spin dependent scattering is one of the important issue and the next issue what we see here is as you increase the layer thickness of the spacer in this example it is gold which is used as a spacer layer and permalloy which is nothing but nickel iron ok nickel iron I will write it here nickel iron is the permalloy and in this case you can see as you vary the thickness of your gold spacer layer the magneto resistance varies like this like oscillation what does it mean at some thickness it is showing GMR property at some thickness it does not show GMR property. So, you can see several maximas coming anti ferromagnetic situation 1, anti ferromagnetic situation 1, uh, anti ferromagnetic 3, anti ferromagnetic 4. So, if you keep on increasing the layer thickness of gold you should actually see more and more of 
uh, GMR or lesser and lesser of GMR happening. But what happens suddenly you see maximum GMR and then there is no GMR property and then there is GMR property and then it comes down. So, it keeps on varying as a oscillatory fraction and that is because of the physics involved in it which can be interpreted based on R k k y type of coupling R k k y type of coupling therefore, this is very important. So, you need to know what is the thickness of the non magnetic layer that you are depositing. So, this thickness of the non magnetic layer is oscillatory it can uh, it can show maximum GMR at 2 nanometer, but at 4 it may not show at all and at 8 nanometer it might show again. So, that is purely because of the exchange coupling which can be explained based on R k k y uh, type of uh, stuff. Um, I will come to this uh, issue of origin of tunneling magneto resistance in a few minutes from now. So far I told you about the origin of uh, giant magneto resistance in metallic multilayers and uh, the issue that I have emphasized there is that of spin dependent scattering. Therefore, when you make such very thin films the interface has to be extremely flat otherwise the electrons can get scattered not just by the moment, but by the interfacial roughness. Therefore, maintaining such flat uh, layers is very important for which people use molecular beam epitaxy as a very convenient tool to make such flat terraces. And if you are if you are uh, wanting to know whether your material is flat enough then you use scanning tunneling microscopy to study whether it is atomically flat. The other origin of TMR device which we call it as tunneling magneto resistance this is not only based on interfacial scattering, but it is based on spin dependent tunneling where the spin sub bands of the ferromagnetic layers and this ferromagnetic layer is very important the spin sub band of this ferromagnet and the spin sub band of this ferromagnet is important. So, let me take it out yeah. So, uh, this spin sub band represents that of the uh, ferromagnetic layer here and this spin sub band determines that of this one. So, when two ferromagnetic layers are aligned then the spin sub bands are also same. So, what would happen? the up spin electrons can easily hop to this one and same is true for the down spin electrons. They will happily go across the insulating layer in this case this is a small barrier it will tunnel through this small barrier to the other ferromagnetic layer where and this is the situation when you apply a magnetic field. Suppose you do not apply a magnetic field h is equal to 0 then you would see that this up spin electron is going reluctantly to this spin sub band because they are anti ferromagnetically coupled as a result the position of this up spin band here is different from the position of the up spin band here. So, energetically they are not favorable therefore, it is going reluctantly same is true for the down spin band in this case it is positioned here whereas in this case it is positioned here therefore energetically it is not favorable in both cases you see a reluctance in the transfer of the spins up or down spin as a result in the anti parallel configuration resistance is greater than the resistance in the parallel configuration and this is not based on the spin dependent uh, interfacial scattering this is based on spin dependent tunneling. And one more thing that is important to note in TMR devices this should not be a metal this should be a insulator and this insulator should be thin enough. So, that this quantum mechanical tunneling can be effective. Okay. So, this is called as uh, tunneling magneto resistance TMR and 
this property what is happening here is a spin dependent tunneling. If we have different spin bands then the first question that I would like to know is what is the spin polarization of these ferromagnets what I am using and the definition for spin polarization is spin density of the up spin states minus density of the down spin electrons divided by density of the up spin plus density of the down spin where d plus and d minus represents the density of states near the Fermi level. Okay. Now, to measure this spin polarization there are two methods one is tunneling technique and the other one is and Andreev reflection method. In both cases we can try to measure the spin polarization of the ferromagnets what you are using and for example, this is permalloy nickel ion permalloy in case of tunneling experiment you see spin polarization up to say 40 percent whereas, in the Andrew mode you see it is around 35. Same is true for cobalt and you can measure for nickel iron and you can measure for nickel uh, manganese uh, antimony this is called a Huesler alloy. Huesler alloy or lanthanum strontium manganates that also shows up to 75 percent of spin polarization, but the best one to show is CrO2 which is a ferromagnetic metal which seems to show spin polarization up to 90 percent or so because it is a half metallic ferromagnet. Okay. So, these are good candidates for using this as an electrode for tunneling magneto resistance devices. So, one of the important criteria is that one of the spins should be a majority spin and if it is 100 percent spin polarized then tunneling magneto resistance can be more pronounced for such applications. There are several other models um, or several other trilayers which have been tried there are experiments on tunneling. Uh, for a very long time as early as uh, 1975 Julieri he found that in iron germanium cobalt you can get uh, up to 14 percent at 4.2 K. But this is interesting because he was the first one to report the tunneling magneto resistance nevertheless the numbers are not very attractive because you have to get this sort of huge values at room temperature. Now, there was another uh, report where they have used nickel, nickel oxide is a antiferromagnetic compound which is an insulator and nickel cobalt uh, layers show magneto resistance like this and TMR is actually tunneling magneto resistance which is, uh, which is explained in terms of spin polarization as 2 P 1 P 2 by 1 minus P 1 P 2 that is the order of TMR and this P 1 P 2 is the polarization of the first electrode and the second electrode. So, the TMR values entirely de depends on the spin polarization more than the thickness of the metallic layers because that thickness becomes more prominent for giant magneto resistive devices. For TMR devices it is the polarization which is more important. You can also get a very nice um, TMR response if you actually have a permalloy alumina cobalt junction where alumina is used as a tunneling barrier because alumina is a very good insulator. So, it is possible to get TMR devices like that and this is again another uh, example where you can clearly see that there is a very nice saturation for a uh, spin uh, valve junction operating on a TMR property. So, you can actually get this sort of uh, <coughs> response if you can try a variety of trilayer or uh, bilayer devices. In a typical uh, TMR device you can see how many magnetic signatures happen if you record the magnetic hysteresis. Uh, if it is a typical uh, TMR device then you are supposed to see this sort of a staircase like magnetic hysteresis and that staircase like magnetic hysteresis has something to say. Um, in uh, the device that is shown here is that of 
gallium arsenide based device where this is the substrate and uh, this is uh, a MgO uh, layer that is deposited also to provide the substrate uh, template and then you have the ferromagnetic layer ion in uh, 200 angstrom that is 20 nanometers and then separated by a 2 nanometer MgO and then you have 200 ang angstrom FeCO. In such a situation you can see if this layer and this layer are ferromagnetically coupled you see the saturation reaching very fast and as you come down at this dip staircase you can see that the lower one is anti ferromagnetically coupled and then you can come down further this uh, the top layer gets rotated therefore, you see again a fully ferromagnetic layer at say 80 Oersted. So, at 80 Oersted here and 80 Oersted here in both case it is ferromagnetically coupled, but in the staircase area you can see that they are anti ferromagnetically coupled and this is a true property of a trilayer uh, TMR device. So, in any TMR device you should see a staircase like property which is a signature that you have made the device and the same is true yeah, actually if you measure it along this axis and if you measure it along this axis you see here a double staircase phenomena will come that is because this moment is actually ro uh, rotating this spin is actually rotating therefore, you see a double staircase situation if you are going to measure it along 0 1 0 plane. Now, this uh, TMR device can also be extended to other cases. One of the problem that we face is when electron goes or tunnels from one ferromagnetic layer to another ferromagnetic layer if the electron is scattered because of short or long time scales then the spin that the electron carries from here to here will be lost or will be minimized the effect will be minimized if because of the non magnetic layer. Why? Because if you are using a metal ferromagnetic uh, non magnetic metal or if you are using a heavier metal ion then there will be spin orbit coupling that is contributing as a result there will be a spin orbit coupling happening as it goes from here to here. So, it is better for us to replace this metal with the organic layer because you have the spin relaxation times are of a very larger scale because there is no metal in organic compounds. So, the electron can take its own time to carry its spin memory from here to here without any scattering. Therefore, the recent TMR devices they are trying to replace the spacer layer from a insulating inorganic layer to a organic insulating layer. In such case you can actually extend the spin memory of uh, the electron going from this ferromagnet to this ferromagnetic layer by extending the length scale. So, lot of work is going on to understand that I will come to this issue later in one of the slides. So, you can make several such uh, um, organic molecules to measure the GMR I will come to this issue uh, shortly from now. So, you also can make uh, other structures like europium sulphide which is which is a non magnetic uh, chalcogenide uh, people have explored and it shows uh, TMR device like this. Now, what is the uh, importance of TMR as I told you earlier uh, the technological relevance of tunneling magneto resistance is to produce magnetic random access memory they are fast dense non volatile cheaper and this is projected to become a 50 billion dollar industry by 2010 we are almost realizing such a market trend as far as TMR property is concerned nearly every major technological company now has a hand in MRAM not only that there are good ferromag ferroelectric devices which are coming which are also useful uh, for integration in MRAM. So, along with the ferromagnetic research there is also ferroelectric 
compounds which are essential for MRAM which makes this a uh, very very challenging venture for most of the industries. Each magnetic tunnel junction is a memory cell that stores a single bit of data. So, to, reach, uh, to write in such a cell one need only a apply a magnetic field to flip the spin orientation of one of these layers. For the tunneling magneto resistance involving organic compounds we call this as organic spintronics because several of these compounds can be used. This is a sexy thiophen which is used here and you also have thiophen molecules substituted with this sort of substituents which makes it more interesting or you can also use the well known ALQ3 which can also act as a very good organic insulator in this TMR devices where organic spintronics can be uh, <coughs> demonstrated. As I told you I am showing a enlarged uh, view of the table which I referred earlier. I can actually take two ferromagnets and now put T6 um, which is sexy thionyl or you can take two ferromagnetic electrodes and you can put uh, 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 organic molecule like ALQ3 or P3HT you can put P3HT is here that is poly 3 hexyl thiophene P3HT or you can use P3OT or you can also use phenyl porphyrin. Phenyl porphyrin can be used here where ferromagnet and another ferromagnet is there MR ratio of the order of 18 percent can be achieved using porphyrin and MR ratio up to 90 percent can be achieved using P3OT, but at lower temperature. What is important is these three uh, device configurations where you can achieve uh, TMR property to a greater extent uh, at room temperature. That is important because for fundamental applications you need TMR properties at room temperature where you can clearly see organic molecules are coming into picture. Uh, P3H is used. Uh, Thiophen is used. So, it is a, a very challenging <coughs> issue as of now to make lot of device combinations for uh, TMR junctions. I will try to um, discuss how other organic uh, layers can be used in this sort of uh, device applications maybe in the next uh, lecture and see how the uh, magneto resistive devices can be improved with the various combination of these interlayers. I will stop here. What we have uh, seen in this lecture is that making magnetic multilayers of different sort with spacer layers brings about a enormous change in the resistance in the presence and absence of magnetic field and this can be extrapolated to many devices having spacers as oxides spaces as non-magnetic metals, spaces uh, involving organic molecules and different magneto resistive property can be observed and this is of importance for application. So, I stop here.